Version controlling code allows for end-to-end -end reproducibility, avoiding the age-old struggle where code works on your computer, but no one else's. Hello, I'm Isabel Zimmerman with the AI Ops team at Red Hat. Using Git or some sort of version control is no longer a negotiable part of being a data scientist. With Git, my work is persistent, which means I can turn off my laptop at the end of the day and pick up right where I left off tomorrow morning. Although it can seem daunting, Git enhances your current data science workflow without making drastic changes to the way that you work. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of what my data scientist friendly Git workflow looks like. Say I just started on a new team with Michael and Francesco from the first Espresso series videos, and I'm really interested in diving into the code that they've already created. I'll find their GitHub repo since that's what our team uses, but any Git friendly workspace will have the same functionality. I'll first make a fork of their repo, which allows me to create my own copy of their code so I can build and test new features without interrupting or messing up anyone else's work. I can now see my version of the code base under my repositories. I'll copy this link to use later to clone the repository. And now I'm ready to get to work. I'll go into my Jupyter Lab workspace on Operate First. If you don't remember how to get started there, our first episode of the Espresso series can help you out. I'll then navigate to the pre-installed Git extension in the Operate First Jupyter Lab environment. Here, I'll click the Clone Repository button and paste the link that we just copied. Git will do its magic, and then we'll see the whole repo populate automatically into our environment. Most data scientists work in Jupyter. I'm still able to keep my current Jupyter workflow with Git. I can install my dependencies and make the updates I need to. And now the magic of Git comes into play. If colleagues on my team need to see my code updates to add their own contributions, I want a robust way for them to see my changes that isn't hopping on a video call and screen sharing or just emailing them files. Rather, I'll save my work and I'll use my Git extension within the Jupyter Lab. I can see what files that I've updated and I'll use the Git diff button to look at the differences. Once I'm certain I've made the changes that I want, I'll use the plus button to stage them. This lets Git know what files I want to be pushed up to my repository. Next, I'll write a quick message about my changes. That way, Michael can easily understand the updates I've made without having to scroll through hundreds of lines of code. With the staged changes and the commit message in place, I can now go ahead and press the commit button. Now, let's confirm that my changes were added by clicking on the History tab. Okay, good. Finally, we'll click on the Cloud button with an up arrow to initiate a Git push to submit my changes to Git. I'll add my username and password, and if all goes well, when we go back to the repository, we can see my edits there. Beyond the basics, not only will your code be persistent, but repositories can connect teams in many different ways. You and your team can add issues to the repositories that help manage tasks, as well as notify everyone when things aren't working quite right. Pull requests allow users to contribute code to your project upon review. In the next episode, you'll learn more about how to collaborate with the team and use even more Git capabilities. You're also able to integrate different applications, such as Red Hat's homegrown Toth station, which manages your dependencies using bots. Git offers a multitude of features and workflows for software engineers and data scientists alike, and we just scratched the surface today. As a data scientist, I want to make sure that my work is persistent and easily shared. Using Operate First and a few software engineering best practices such as version control, I'm able to use Git to make life easier for me and my team. I invite everyone to have a closer look at the other episodes of the Operate First Espresso series and share. Thanks for watching.